but we are here it is wednesday night we are uh doing the show that everybody knows is called hey did you see this one and this week we have a very special june henson produced movie it's actual jim henson movie called hey the dark crystal um it doesn't have a hay in it i don't know why i said that my brain hey is... it's the dark crystal yeah, putting hay on everything now my brain is completely fried. I think it's cooking inside my skull because it went up to 35 today and my apartment is still about 35 degrees, if I was to guess. Yeah. But our, our thermostat's broken, so I can't even, can't even check. Um, yeah, so, oh, before we move forward, I'm going to check the audio, make sure that you guys can hear me on the thing because I did mute my audio completely. I can hear you on the on the stream. You can hear me on the stream? Yes. Because on Monday night we did the trailer show and I was uh, I bet it makes for a recorded. funny episode though. No, it's just like there it'll be like one of you asks a question and then I just go and we're both like, "Oh, yeah." yeah. yeah. It's like some Andy Kaufman uh, type of uh, comedy. Yeah, except for way more subtle. Except for way more subtle and, and so uh, subtle, we didn't even know we were doing it. <laughs> yeah. So um, this movie's from the 1980s. Uh, it is a 1982. I believe that. Yeah, it is a basically the 70s. It. Um, <laughs> I would like to know your guys's history because I'm just gonna go first because mine's quick. Mine's the quickest. I have these weird like memories of seeing this and seeing Labyrinth and seeing um, Never Ending Story all around the same time because it, you know I would have been like five years old in 1990. So I think all three of those movies had been out by that point. And I, they kind of all just bleed together. But this one, I remember the absolute least. Um, I feel like I've never actually seen it. And if I have seen it, I saw it when I was before my brain came online so to speak <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean when i was still in that theta wave part of my life where you don't really you have that self-awareness yet yeah you don't have that sentient being you're in, it's like a computer going through an update mode you're just stuck in update mode for five years but you're just pure it's all learning it's all it's yeah. like ai in fact we might be in a simulation in, in the first five years is the ai coming on board um Ooh. Well, oh, Caitlin's mind's a little bit blown by that. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> uh, but that's pretty much it for me. Um, I never, Labyrinth and Everything Story are both movies that I've gone back and seen throughout the years. You know, like uh, my last time I saw Never Ending Story, I was actually in Costa Rica and we were at this, we we're staying at this <laughs> like Airbnb kind of thing in this like little, res like was a, it was an old resort that was just converted into like a small Airbnb. And uh, there was a kids night and all the kids from like the like the, the locals came and watched a uh, never ending story with the people staying in like the hotel motel kind of thing. And it was uh, a neat experience. Me and Madison ended up staying for the whole movie. So that was cool. Uh, and Labyrinth, of course, I've, I, I've talked about it on a couple of different shows. I've, I watched that when I was a teenager, all stoned. So I'll pass it over to you, Cage, UK land. Oh, hello. Uh, this is my first time seeing the movie. Um, <laughs> I'm not even sure if I've ever even, like, the cover doesn't look familiar to me. Um, the name, I think, like, kind of sounds familiar. Uh, I have seen, I think I saw Never Any, I'm not even, no, I'm pretty sure I saw Never Any Story. What's the other one? Labyrinth? Falcor! You don't remember the kid yelling Falcor? And then also, you know, spoilers, his horse dies in quicksand. Sorry, his no horse was named that. Artax. Please Sorry. respect the dead. <laughs> his horse named Horse. <laughs> I, you know, I might do something like that. Just name things what they are. Kind of like that dragon from Dragonheart, Draco, but it's just like a different name for dragon. Or anyway. how to train your dragon uh, where it's just the dragon's name is, I don't know. Sorry. Toothless because he has no teeth. I was riffing, but Steve once again has to tell us what the reality is. I like Hero, dragons. Hey, did you see this one on Wednesday night at 9 15? I was going to bring us on point. I'm sober tonight. 
Um, the so yeah, I I don't have a nostalgic connection uh, to this movie, which watching it now at uh, thirty five. Um, the I appreciated the craftsmanship of it. Like it was basically the main thing for me. Uh, I I watched it. Something tells me that that's going to be the majority of our conversation this evening. Is yeah, about the craftsmanship yeah, yeah, yeah. and not my shelves. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And me me relating it literally every frame back to Final Fantasy, which I took extensive. Oh, that's actually about. that's what I'm excited for the for this episode is to hear your how you're connecting it to Final Fantasy. Uh, I don't want to shit on this movie at all, but it's not for me. I'll say yeah. that much, and I and I don't have the nostalgic connection to it, so there's that much more of a disconnect but um it was yeah i it was well done especially for early i mean i have always been a fan of like practical over cgi regardless of what decade it is like i just i prefer it there's just a preference or whatever i mean even as cgi gets better and better and better it's definitely more seamless and seamless you still know it's not real so you still can't touch it or whatever it's not tangible um so i give this points for that for sure steve steve oh. why don't you Save tell us. us about it give us some <laughs> tell good. us all about it um, tell us all about your relation to frank oz too because he he said mm, a lot of times in this movie uh, yeah frank oz co-directed the movie Jim played the main character like he, he puppeteered <laughs> well, they, or whatever they yeah they didn't do a lot of the voices um no a lot of the, yeah. lot of the voices were done by in uh, vo after the fact um yeah because i think they they did record a lot of the dialogue on set but they ended up having to go back and redo a bunch of it because it just didn't sound good anyway my first time seeing this movie was sunday <laughs> i have seen bits and pieces of it before in the past uh, it was on tv a lot when i was a kid but um I'd always kind of catch it in the middle. Like I would never be able to, like, you know, you're a kid, you don't really think about like, oh, it starts at this time. And also it wasn't one of those movies that my parents <laughs> my were like, TV you guy? gotta watch this shit. Unless it was Full um, House. I knew when that shit was on like clockwork. Well, I mean, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Did you guys ever measure time by yes. episodes of Full House? Shows? And like it'll matters. be two shows. It'll be three shows. Yeah. My parents, anytime yeah. I was like, how long until we get to the destination? They'd be like, two episodes of the Power Rangers or whatever. 35 Power Ranger episodes. And I'd yeah. be like, no, <laughs> that's so many. <laughs> um, but I, like I said, I'd seen a bunch of it in chunks as a kid, but I didn't have the same sort of nostalgic connection that a lot of people do. And I, I noticed just like going through everyday life, there are people who are absolutely obsessed with the Dark Crystal. And like the TV show came out a couple of years ago and I was working at a, a nerd bar at the time. And I remember some people, the people that are slightly older than me were, were just like so excited for this show. And I was like, I mean, it looks cool. Puppets are cool. Um, yeah. But uh, watching the show with no context, I was kind of like, I, I don't know what is going on. And even as the show's explaining to me, I'm like, I don't think this show is for me. And I felt the same way when I was watching the movie as well. It's, it's super simplistic very cut and dried good versus evil dark and light it's all just like the most yeah, basic yeah. storytelling elements yeah. and uh you know you don't end up feeling super emotionally connected to anyone um which sort of leaves the movie feeling a little bit hollow in the end but like you know again it's a kid's movie you're not really supposed to uh be overwhelmed with like the the deep thought that went into everything it's just sort of like you know it's for kids well put but it's also really creepy and like spooky and within the first you know five ten minutes of the movie i was kind of thinking to myself like you know i feel like i would be in danger as a child watching this and <laughs> having nightmares because it's pretty nasty the the skexis are all gooey and like dry at the same time like they're dripping and but they're also look at they, like when they die they turn into dust <laughs> um there was but, more nudity in this movie than i was expecting yeah this is like <laughs> when chamberlain got his clothes all pulled off and he had like 30 nipples yeah. before we get into the ball or sorry were you done steve no yeah <laughs> i just i it, this kind of pertains to um the intro bit but have you guys actually, like, Steve, you said you watched a bit of the show and kind of you kind of were like, meh. Uh, Kaylin, did you, I know you like to, like, complete viewing. So did you watch any of the TV show? That is a good point. 
Um, you guys mentioned something about a show. Actually, I think I saw something on Netflix about Dark Crystal series or whatever. I haven't checked it out, though. So when it came out, I remember having the same sort of thought process that Steve had. But I'm like a I'm a completionist in that I need to. The reason why I can't watch Doctor Who is because I've said this on the show before. I can never go back and fully experience it from the beginning because there's literally blocks of episodes that died in a fire. There was a fire at the BBC. There's episodes that weren't that were only transcribed once on one videotape or whatever, one reel, and they were destroyed for the for for time. And and there's no way to get that back. I'm sure that they like, you know, you could read the script if you wanted to. You could. There's probably ways around it, but that's not my viewing process and when that show came out it was very much back when netflix was still very good everything they were putting out was like everybody loved i remember it being like a one of those shows where everybody's like that crystal's back it's amazing it looks cool blah 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 and i didn't end up watching it but the thing is is this movie it it's visually interesting enough that i kind of want to watch the first episode of the dark crystal tv show just to see if they actually were able to evolve the puppeteering that much because what I suspect happened when this movie came out is it was such a leap in puppeteering and and special effects and practical effects that um, it went from being bleeding edge cutting edge the year it came out and every subsequent year after it came out it got creepier and creepier to the point where us elder millennials look at it and go it came out three years before i was born i'm the oldest right so for you guys four years you know four years and five years and and you get to this older age and for instance my wife comes downstairs and i'm like do you want to watch the end of dark crystal with me and she's like no it makes me uncomfortable and i think that i think the animation and the the puppeteering of a lot of it is it just makes our brains revert to that like being a kid those weird puppet movies that were always on in varying degrees of quality dark crystal was probably on all the time and just we have like weird like brain sensations and aversions to the this kind of animation because i kept me in my notes i kept writing this is for kids it's the storytelling is so simplistic and basic but at the same time the imagery is like horrifying so i almost feel like the dark crystal could have been r-rated <clears throat> it feels a lot like R-rated. a studio. <laughs> feels a lot like a Studio Ghibli movie in a lot of ways. Is what I was. What, was well, yeah, that's kind away. of Frank Oz's whole, or not Frank Oz, but uh, Jim Henson's whole thing is that he wanted to make movies that weren't necessarily like safe Disney, strictly for children kind of thing. Is like his whole sort of philosophy behind it was children. It's unhealthy for children to never be scared. Mm-hmm. Um, you should present them with uncomfortable or in some cases horrifying imagery within their content because if everything is a fluffy chipmunk constantly all the time they're not going to have you know a contrast and so when they are truly met with something horrifying in real life they're not going to be able to have that sort of buffer emotionally 80s and early 90s filmmakers and television makers had that mindset too because you go back and watch some of these things that were rated pg even and it's like this is nowadays closer to an r an R there, you friggin'. No, I was I wasn't laughing at your pronunciation of R. I was laughing that you said this should be rated R. Or could be oh, rated R. I don't <laughs> mean this words. particular. I don't mean the Dark Crystal. Quentin Tarantino presents <laughs> the Dark Crystal. <laughs> he just recuts That'd it. That'd be puts dope. a bunch of like weird, blood. like weird nudity and and gore. There's a little in bit it. of blood in this movie. Yeah. Um, and a little bit of nudity, but um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I agree with most of what you said, but he, like. This one again, like like you were saying, you have these sort of like fragmented memories of it from when you were a kid. But like, I do, I'm pretty sure I tried to watch it as a kid, and I just got kind of bored. I didn't really yeah. find it to be as compelling as something like the Never Ending Story, where you're moving from sort of biome to biome within the story, and it's presenting you with these new visuals. And every it's more of a travel minutes. adventure thing. Like this one, this one's a very short travel adventure through a small forest, and then like kind of up a mountain, and that's it. Yeah, it doesn't feel like there's a vastness to the world. The world feels very small. And you get the impression um, from people who love this movie that it is like that, but I think they might be confused with the never ending story because Well, there's probably like so yeah. much lore and stuff that we don't even really know about. Like yeah. I did watch a couple episodes of the, the show and your sort of 
inquisitive, <laughs> sorry, your, uh, your question as to whether or not the puppeteering has improved, the answer is, of course, like, <laughs> it's like <laughs> almost 30 years yeah. of, um, of pioneering versus like development and improvement upon an existing sort of art form, right? The reason why I asked those, the, the thing that I noticed the most is that watching this in, in high def, it doesn't, it almost looks like a modern movie that looks aged down versus some things that you uh, put in high yeah. def, you put in high def and they, it ages them even worse than they are. This looked yeah. like it could have been, somebody made it to look like this because the, the puppeteering, and the ideas while they're going through the forest like i just keep thinking over and over the scene where you just get a shot of the woods and then this like weird like creature is like a plant but then it's a creature and it walks away and then yeah. this like little dinosaur dude's running through the woods and he stands in what you think is just like an opening of like a rock and then the rock eats him and that's when i was like this is studio ghibli movies have the same like they just cut <laughs> to like they just cut to like the forest being the forest. Yeah. Especially Princess Monoki, right? Like the sort of like tranquil, chaotic energy. Yeah. Where it's yeah. just fantasy. We're curious, in a fantasy world. How did they make those little critters uh, run around? String. They just pulled them Was it string? string? Yeah. yeah. They, there was a lot of moments. It looked like that. it might have been more than just string, though. Like it didn't, you know what I mean? Like it didn't look that simple. Yeah, there's probably sometimes the techniques. most like sometimes if something looks very simple, it is very simple, you know, like especially in yeah in the world of puppeteering. But, but think um, about it like this though. It's like there were there for every moment that looked cool because they figured out some trick, there were moments that looked literally like Team America. Um <laughs> like when they're riding those things towards the end, the things the tall, like like I don't want to say horses, but like that's they're basically horses. And they just show like wide shots of them riding. The puppet sitting on top is just going like. <laughs> <laughs> We've been called simple by the, the chat. Um, we look We're simple. simple. We look like simple puppet puppet people. I'm a simple puppet I'm man, Miyagi. Puppet. Thanks for joining, Miyags. Have you seen uh, the Dark Crystal? Oh yeah, we'll address the chat later. Um, well, maybe to... maybe maybe we address the chat during this episode because uh, who knows? Who knows? Maybe they'll help liven it up. Do you want me to do... We'll glance over it every once in a while. I'm gonna, here, I'm going to try something new. I'm not going to just read doing? through the whole plot. I'm going to read one paragraph of the plot at a time this time. So it's not just me reading to the, to the stream. You want to try this? Do you want to... Let's try thinking... that. Okay. Yeah. Let's, it, let's, it's a story in four acts, let's say. So okay. a thousand years ago on the planet Thra, two new races oh. appeared when a shard was shattered from the crystal of truth. The cruel Skeksis who are continued corruption of the crystal to extend their lives, and the gentle Uru, more commonly known as mystics, who make their home in the Valley of Stones to await their destiny. The leader of the mystics, the master Ursu, raises a young Gelfling named Jen, whose clan was slaughtered by the Skeksis. As the great conjunction of Thra's three sons draws near, a dying Ursu instructs Jen to fulfill a prophecy to heal the crystal by first retrieving the shard from Agra. If Jen fails to complete his quest before the three sons meet, the Skeksis will rule forever. As Ursu passes, the Skeksis emperor, Skekso, Skekso the wise, also dies, leaving the position of the leader vacant. The oh, chamberlain, the queen? Skekso, the emperor. The guy who turns to dust in like the first was five that, minutes. Yeah, that that uh, that was a dope. I really liked that shot a lot. That was really well done. And the Gartha Master Skekung challenge each other. You know, trial by stone for succession. Confusing. I have a theory about why that was made the way it was, uh, resulting in Skekung defeating Skeksil. Skeksil is stripped of his robes and banished, while Skekung is proclaimed the it's new. Weird emperor. that they keep. Oh, this is the Wikipedia page you're reading, I suppose, right? Yeah. So, like, what? I didn't capture any of those names while watching the movie. I just called them General and uh, what was the other guy's position? Chamberlain. Chamberlain I thought his Lane, name was yeah. Chamberlain. <laughs> yeah. And I thought that was like a dig at, uh, wasn't there like a politician or something? Uh, or a Chamberlain or is a position within. Yeah, government. it's a, the chamber oh, person. Okay. When the Skeksis learn of Jen's existence, they send the army of giant crab like Gartham to capture him with the cunning Skeksil following. So that's the first, that sort of opens up the movie. 
Um, Miyagi asks, anyone find it hard, uh, difficult uh, to get into puppets? I know a lot of people love this, including my partner, but I find it hard to get into. And I think that's... Like to put it on? I don't have a difficulty with it. It's just um, sometimes you need a live action person to pull you back into reality and then you know because then it just after a while it gets a little bit overwhelming and you do just feel like you're watching a kid's thing you know i forgot that there were no people in this and i <laughs> forgot that this was the one where the humanoid cr creature people the g gufflings or what get gelflings yes. they look they're the most unsettling thing in a world of what? ursus and fucking skexuses what was unsettling they're like little like kangaroo people or something Say that to yourself again and don't get weird. They're little kangaroo <laughs> people. <laughs> Look at, you can see on Steve's screen that Kira looks. Yeah. It kind of looks yeah. like Cardi, Cardi B kind of looks like a gelfling. That's true. If you, yeah, she, she just got a whole, well, the, she just got a whole bunch of like face injections and lip implants. Botox? But the, the thing that unsettled me the most is the puppeteering in the faces for like, the ridiculous looking creatures had so much more points of articulation and their eyes didn't look a lot more expressive and the gelflings except for one scene where um where jen like crinkles his nose at in disgust the rest of the time he was just like hey guys how are you doing yeah they look like yeah weird. that's a good point yeah. just like mannequin mouth yeah it's uh yeah it's it's hard to, to the believability is is not as uh you know it's not as compelling as it was when you were a child to see a puppet talking when it's got no articulation in its features and stuff because <laughs> like the bigger they make a puppet the more they can make it move like even in something that came out not too long after this uh or was it before gremlins when did gremlins come out that's 1984 isn't it or 1983 and those are different those I are like after those are like gremlins. like 84 i think they were so. animatronic they were yeah but yeah. one, one trick that they would yeah. One trick trick they would do in in that is they would build a super oversized gizmo, right. so they could do right. close ups, and it's like basically like a, an enormous gizmo, and it, it had lots of articulation in the mouth and eyes and stuff, and it it reads better obviously than just a, a sock puppet basically with a bunch of hair on it. And <laughs> there were those two scenes. Oh, what's he just say Miyagi says a uh, good point. When you're a kid, it's awesome, and he's just lost the magic, and that might be. <laughs> what's happened so to sad. us a little bit yeah right. i think we'll, we'll probably have a little bit more fun with the next one because of, of magical, david bowie magical man himself <laughs> Being a sexy pervert would you like to see my he's not a pervert he? look I at made my them for bulge you. why am i going after a 16 year old girl because I want to marry her. Because I need her my to become wife. the Goblin King. Anyway, we'll, I'm sure we'll get a lot of that <laughs> out of our system next week. Uh, um, so, yeah. Um, I mean, there's like some interesting points about this movie that can be made that are not particularly the story or um, just like just like the, the fact that you know frank oz he did not just want to do muppets constantly all the time even though that's what ended up happening because that's all anybody wanted to give him money for um even the distribution of this film they had a bunch of notes that he had to meet a deal. in order to get yeah. full uh full dist distribution but he ended up just buying the distribution rights and distributed it himself because he's like whatever <laughs> i'm not changing it but here's the um, thing the technology almost like wasn't there for it as much as we've praised how good it looks. I think that they did the trial by stone. This is the goes back to my little theory that I have. I think they did Ooh, the trial by corner. the trial. <laughs> Jason's theory corner. I should make a little. Mm -hmm. uh, I should make a thing for it, a title card. But um, uh, the reason why I think that is because it looked so ridiculous when they just clanged swords that they had <laughs> to do this like whoever can cut the rock in half bit. Because if they tried to have these two puppets fight each other, I don't know. Uh, it, it would Because when it cuts to Jen running away later, there's one scene where he runs and jumps out a window and it's clearly just a little person or or even just an actor. I think it's, I think it's a, yeah, there is a few scenes where I like where it's the rock someone... thing. I think the rock thing is cool. But I they, well, I agree cool with thing. you. I agree with you that it, it is cool and it's different. I think it's that a solution there were, to a problem. I think. I think that there were yeah. plans to make these motherfuckers fight each other. Most definitely there were, and they realized just couldn't. we can't do it. Yeah, <laughs> let's have let's make up a weird lore thing where they have to smash a rock with a sword. But I so kind of like that. It's like a weird sort of like 
ritualistic thing that seems like these gross bird people yeah. who don't look like they could fight each other anywhere just like who's way able to, fight, to hit yeah. this rock better and i like that yeah. it's been like mashed on for what seems like generations <laughs> like it's just this stone they have it's and he cool. finally bashes it to bits it's like a reverse sword in the stone yeah it was a neat yeah. um it was a neat little moment but i immediately thought i thought they were going to fight and before when when they when he poked him he pokes them and he's like ha ha pokes them and then they clang swords you weakling yeah i was like there's no fucking way that they're going to make this look right but the movie isn't bad and it's not cheesy and they don't take shortcuts like that everything looks the way it's supposed to look in my opinion the problem yeah. with the movie is just it's it's a kids movie but it might be too frightening for kids. So, like, who's this movie for? Kind of thing. Like, well, I mean, it, it is for kids. Like, if, midnight if, movie. We we sit we sit here as adults, being like, this might be too frightening for kids. But like, this is what kids' movies were. The, the nightmare. There's the Nightmare Before Christmas. I mean, that also that some, also is terrifying. Some people that's would say point. that's too scary for kids. But I watched that as like a five year old, and I it was I was the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. That's true. Yeah, that's I got point. it for on um, VHS for Christmas and I put it in and all my cousins ran out of the room and it was just me being like, this is Halloween, Halloween, <laughs> Halloween, Halloween. Um, so it's like there, these types of movies are for a specific type of kid. And I think that's what's what Jim Henson was really good about is he's like, I am making a movie for a specific type of kid. And it's they're the made for weirdo like, kids who grow up to like have seen, in my case, every TV show in existence and in your guys' cases, every movie in existence. And then they get together to do a podcast where their brains are filled with creative theories. Well, eventually about, kids become bigger kids. That's true. And they don't age past about 15 because that's where I stopped evolving. Now I just have a. I, I'm like well, an that's not true. A remember, shirt. remember when we did uh, the Trey Parker Matt Stone month, and you really you had a like an epiphany about yourself. You're like, I that's think true. my sense of humor has evolved. <laughs> I think I don't find the same dick joke five times in a row as funny anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, and but, and Cannibal the Musical is my favorite out of those movies during that 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 period. So you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I mean, like, like I said, there is lots of stuff that you can say about this movie that elevates it above other kids' movies of, of the era. Um, I prefer this over watching some of the old Muppet movies. One thing about this movie is that there isn't really any levity at all. Like, it's a kids' movie with no jokes. It's, like, deadly <laughs> serious, and everything is very much, like, it's a fantasy story about there, fantasy creatures in a fantasy world, yeah. and nobody there is was laughing that one joke. I, I'm mm -hmm. not sure if it was meant to be a joke, but just because you laughed at like, something doesn't mean it's a joke <laughs> <laughs> you have wigs i don't have wigs of course not you're a boy yeah i no. i think that was lore building i think a legitimate joke though was the thing running across and standing in the rock and the rock closing on him and also the whole fizz rig fizz gig whatever the ball of fur fizz with the gig, double yeah. mouth yeah. that thing i think was the comic relief while was he the was the yeah because <laughs> i wrote in my notes i was like fizz rig is my hero <laughs> i don't know why i just gravitate to weird tertiary characters in film and Mi miyagi says yeah kids can handle it it'll just expand their minds man so yeah that's i agree a good point, steve they need it they need developing they need uh they need uh and i they need uh well they need to be exposed to different things you just, you know, yeah. just like show kids the same shit over and over again and they're not going to become creative people ironically enough people I can tell I can talk a lot of talk about what kids should and shouldn't see, but if I was a parent, <laughs> I would be the one being like, "Hey, check this out. Watch this ridiculous thing from my childhood and see if it messes you up like it messed me up." You want to watch all <laughs> Pee Wee Herman? You want to watch all Pee Wee Herman? We're watching all Pee Wee Herman. I'm not explaining the any of the jokes. Show or the and, movie? Because the show is hilarious. It. All of it, even <laughs> the Broadway thing that's mostly adult jokes, but it still plays plays for kids. The movie's great, Tim Burton. Yep. Um, so one of the things that inspired this movie actually was uh, the artwork of Brian Froud, who is like oh, a, not Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy came after. Came after. We'll get into that, uh, Kalen. I know you're excited, but I'm he was like a prod. I'm just trying to. <laughs> you're trying to derail, is what you're trying to do. Um, <laughs> he was like a, pre a prestigious and predominant fantasy illustrator of the time and tim burton or not tim burton sorry jim henson um i think saw like an illustration in a book and he's like oh man and he started writing the script and then he 
it was like, you know what? I'm going to see if this guy wants to come in and do all the conceptual designs and stuff for the creatures. And he did. And he came in and worked on uh, the lab labyrinth as well afterwards. And uh, he has like a huge, you know, like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Ego? Uh, no, like uh, an, an omnibus, an omnibus. Yeah, it's like, like a, a, like a, a show tome. Bible. Yeah, it's like a tome of artwork for all the Dark oh, Crystal yeah. world. Um, but yeah, it's it's really cool to look at as well. If you just kind of, I, I was looking at a little bit of stuff before this, and I was like, wow, this is cool. I can see why he brought him on and kept him. And uh, you know, I, I know that the three of us didn't really enjoy this movie all that much, but it is kind of one of those things where you're like, I wonder what Tim, or Tim Burton, Jim Henson, <laughs> Tim Turtle, they have the same amount of syllables and flow <laughs> to their name, and they're both dark weirdos at heart. Um, just kind of makes me wonder what else he would have done because you know labyrinth is sort of the next step in this direction except i think yeah. he kind of learned from mis mistakes Better, yeah and he had talked about before he died making not a sequel but another story set in the same world of the dark crystal which yeah, is pretty cool and then the netflix show i guess didn't really learn anything from that <laughs> they're like no let's just make a sequel <laughs> or i think it's a what prequel i don't even know what it is it's just what called like the next the revelation or some shit. So it's called the, the resistance or something, or like the revolution or Stalin. revelations, or I can't remember. Revelations, revolution. Age of resistance. More Dark things. Crystal, age of resistance. More things. But like I know in the beginning it says uh that the two races, the Skeksis and the Mystics, came out of like the shattering of the crystal. I, I always kind of thought of, of this as they were one race and the dark crystal shattering turned them into two races because they do look similar you know like they they have big large bodies and like beak like faces kind of vulture, also yeah. the end also the ending <laughs> where they literally right. go back to one combined true yeah uh um i had another thing i was gonna say i can't remember move on okay. i like that the, all the planets look like an eyeball <laughs> well I'm, that's true i'm going to can i get into a little bit of the final fantasy stuff i'll get it out of the way i won't make it too long-winded um but it has to do directly with an image i'm going to put into my background as i Ooh. slowly get to it now oh, for fuck's sakes what is that link it down no it's not link so there's a race in final fantasy well in the, in Ivalis, in Final Fantasy Can you make it a smaller picture? Tactics in Final Fantasy Twelve that look exactly like the um, what are they called? Mystics. Yeah, the Mystics, but that are, that are that are also called the Uru. Uru sounds a lot like Numu. And what I noticed is I think that there are sort of three kinds of fiction, fantasy fiction. And their origins go back to basically, you know, 60s sci-fi, which turns into like movies like Battlestar, original Battlestar and, and Star Wars. And then you have high fantasy, which is directly transcendent of Lord of the Rings. And then you have weird middling sci-fi fantasy, which this doesn't have a lot of sci-fi, but it has a little bit of steampunk. But the Final Fantasy games all kind of fall into this Dark Crystal sort of version of, of fantasy. I'm not a fan of high fantasy. I don't like swashbuckling swords and, and, and like basic magic and like riding horses and chivalry and shit. I like it when it's- You don't like chivalry? You don't open the door open for, <laughs> pull the seat open for your missing? Yeah, good luck actually doing that and not getting yelled at because don't be a weirdo in public. But uh, <laughs> what to hold a door? Or pull hold the door for everybody. Hold the door, guys. For anybody. This is not the place or time right. to have this. Discussion. My point. My point. My point is, I this is the kind of fantasy I am actually drawn to traditionally. So as much as I did have problems with the story, it is the it is the very core of almost every single Final Fantasy game in um, the whole Final Fantasy mythos. Each Final Fantasy game is its own story. But there are a lot of things that tie them together. The, the most basic story, Final Fantasy I, is literally four warriors of light set on a journey to get bring the, the four crystals 
of the elements back together because there's a super bad guy who's trying to summon another super bad guy. Final Fantasy II, basically an emperor, so on and so forth. Um, a lot of the imagery you'll see reused through the Final Fantasy games directly from Dark Crystal. That uh, when they go to the the laboratory with the with uh, what's her what's her name? Also, why were her nipples? Oh, Agra. Agra, there we go. Agra. Why were her nipples so pronounced? But she had she looked like a monster woman, and those weren't nipples. Horns. (laughs) Oh, they were boob claws. They were crystals. Um, dark crystals. (laughs) Not to like. (laughs) First and foremost, the crystal whole crystal thing it runs through all the games, but in Final Fantasy Nine, right? or Final Fantasy VII, sorry, you go to a very similar observatory where an Called ancient... Called an Ari. It's not a laboratory. It's an Ari. I said, okay, an Ari or an observatory, whatever. <laughs> an observatory is where you observe the stars and an Ori is where you predict the movement of the stars. Okay, thank you, Mr. <laughs> D.D. <laughs> or anyway. celestial bodies, if you will. Anyway, you go to the you go to the city of the ancients in Final Fantasy VII. You go into this. Stu's, sorry, Miyagi's just laughing at me while I try to piece this together. Um, but essentially, it's it, you get the same scene, and also Final Fantasy IX aesthetically looks like the Dark Crystal. So anyway, that's basically all I wanted to say about that. But the new Mu look exactly like the Uru or whatever they're called. And I also just wanted to say that, and I I think that I like the Dark Crystal as an idea or a theory or a like a, a creation of lore to like draw well then from. you should check out the show you might like it that's what like i'm the saying sh- the show is not bad like i just didn't really get into it and i watched more than one episode because i was like oh this is intriguing I, was I just trying kind of to, fell off of it i was trying to keep an open mind for the boringness of this movie by pretending i was watching a final fantasy spin-off thing or a prequel or <laughs> that's how you get into every movie you're like just imagine how do I it's Final this? Fantasy. how do i relate this uh you're like man world... alfred Hitch- hitchcock's classic psycho is so boring i just have to imagine all these people's <laughs> final fantasy characters well caitlin wants to muppetize everything i want to final fantasyize everything um but that's my rant about it being basically the the prototype for a lot of the like when you see a final fantasy game look kind of old school they don't really do medieval high fantasy ever in final fantasy games um or very seldomly it's usually mixed with like sci-fi or mixed with like futurism the weird fantasy part looks a lot like the dark crystal and the crystal theme was jacked directly from this definitely because the fact that he had to find a piece of a crystal that completes another crystal is the most video game shit ever <laughs> yeah i don't think that uh, final fantasy was the only one to uh, pull from the dark definitely crystal. not <laughs> i also don't think the dark crystal is the only thing that final fantasy has pulled from <laughs> they Zifrit. love shit zifrit says watches wrestling this, this is, is exactly final fantasy. <laughs> this is final fantasy <laughs> don't, i'll get into that too here's the thing about professional wrestling it's live action comic books not unlike anime it's kind of anime so everything's like anime if you think anime. hard enough race car uh, i want to watch a nascar anime where they fucking go into like super it's called mode. speed racer oh it yeah exists. <laughs> and f-zero and f-zero yeah thank you for Is coming to my Falcon? final fantasy corner there's oh, going to be more how do i get out of this month. corner there's going to be at least next week people keep this might be the earliest it. movie title shout out i'll have to go through my notes and maybe at the end of the season, I'll do uh, I'll do like the top, like the quickest, earliest movie title shoutouts. Two minutes and thirty-two seconds. The Dark Crystal was a crystal one thousand years ago. It was ago. so dark. Um, <laughs> I, I gotta so say crystalline. though, that the opening sting of the music is just like, okay, here we go. I'm I'm being transported to a fantasy world all right but then the quiet chaos sets in i actually another little thing that i noticed is this is the kind of movie you could watch with your kid on like a sunday afternoon when you're all hung over and it gets real quiet a lot so the kid might like you know pass out and, and if you're hung over get... you'll also pass out and you'll also, also why are you hung out. over if you have kids <laughs> well, shouldn't be getting my, drunk if you've got my kids parents, around I, hey i just see what i know and my parents i see okay 
I used to put on Star Trek, so I'd pass out, and I hate Star Trek. Because oh, that's what that. I do now. <laughs> that's how I pass out now. I put on the Star Trek to pass out. Um, Captain the movie? Would say, all right, Picard, the take the me TNG home. TNG specifically. Goes, Next generation. Make I just so, have these weird memories that are similar to the way that we're mem- remembering this movie, where it's just like, boop, woo, 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 boop. I know that's yeah. TOS, but Star, Star Trek, Trek yeah. Star Trek has its own or TNG has its own version of that that's just sort yeah, of it's like just beeps. Like the hum <laughs> of the spaceship and it's then a hum with like, I'm Wolf. Yeah. You have no honor. One. <laughs> Captain, why must I wear this hat? <laughs> what were different. you drawing before the pod, Steve? I'm working on an outro for one of the videos for one of the chapters. It's chapter 18. It's a pub. Is that glove for like monitor screens or whatever? Uh, it's just so it, it helps my hand glide across my tablet without. Uh, yeah, to like have it, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. so much friction on my hand um, that I can't get the smoothness of the line sometimes if my hand gets sweaty. For some reason, I thought it was for like like pencil or whatever. It's like you don't like. I use it with my pencil what? sometimes too because it actually helps from smudging the the uh, lead. And then yeah. when I use my iPad, you get so many smudges on it, so the glove just yeah. doesn't smudge your screen. Jen lots, meets lots Agra and enters her Ori, which she uses to predict the heavens. And she explains about the conjunction <laughs> before having Jen select the correct shard. Before Agra can explain Jen's mission, the Gathram arrive and destroy the Ori. Another thing about the, the Gathram, they look exactly like antlions from every Final Fantasy game. They live in the desert and they look the same. I just or feel very vindicated Final that you just had to say the word Ori more than once in a sentence. It's true. <laughs> it's true. If I would have just read like two seconds later, I would know that it's not called a laboratory or an observatory, but in fact an Ori. Taking Agra prisoner as Jen flees. Hearing the call of the crystal, the mystics leave their valley to return the castle of the crystal. On the journey through for- a forest swamp, Jen meets Kira, another surviving, surviving Geffling. The two learn more about each other when they accidentally dream fast. Kind of the, that scene reminded me of uh, Avatar a little bit. Uh, sharing each other's memories, uh, they stay for a night with the podlings, gnomes, uh, who raise Kira, only for them and Kira's pet Fizgig to flee with the Githrim raid. When the Githrim raid the village, uh, they are nearly caught, but uh, Skeksil intervenes, keeping the Githrim from pursuing them. Which is the Chamberlain, right? He's like, after he gets yeah. banished or whatever, yeah. Yeah, so let's talk about that the next little bit of the movie because things are picking up. There's a bit of, uh, there's a bit of intrigue finally happening and the, the Dream Fast was a real like lore dump because you get to see basically their whole lives. They both got separated in a massive, I think, I think they got raided or something at, at their at their camp, and then they got split up and lived with two different races of of being on this in this world. Um, the Kira's family were basically the gnomes of this world, and Jen's family were the new move from Final Fantasy Twelve. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any? comments about that or do you want me to just move to the, the beatles part? look cool i like the beatles the uh um, the guards or whatever like those uh the big beatle monsters yeah like like you, you can't tell me you don't know what i'm talking about <laughs> it's just giant beatles that chase them around <laughs> crab beetles crab beetles the, the skexies sent after them yes right? the big monsters yeah, yeah, yeah. that look like beetles yeah um they i i I remember in the show that was like the one time that i was like oh they do have a bit of cgi going on here and it was just to like make the legs look good like everything is pretty much puppets in that show but there is a bit of cgi enhancement i think they do it on the faces as well a little bit to like have a little bit more articulation than just a a hand inside of a foam head the grethrim in this looked the most like it was just a person walking around in, in a costume Yes, I found because it was because it but, was, yeah, exactly but it was still was. like really cool looking and kind of unsettling. I found. Yeah, I like how like when they're when they first call them out onto uh, their little plateaus or whatever when they're surrounding the crystal, and like the way they just kind of like stop and there's all this dust and the legs kind of like keep jittering because I feel like they probably were like moving something around inside there to like 
Yeah. But um, I, did, I haven't watched any of the making of stuff for this, but I did watch the making of for the Resistance, Age of Resistance show. And it, it's actually more interesting than I found the show to be. <laughs> I was like, wow, this is all so cool. I was very frustrated by the fact that the Age of Resistance is on um, Netflix and a making of, but I had to, I actually bought this movie off Prime because uh, I couldn't, <clears throat> the, the seas had no bounty on this day no quick bounty <laughs> yeah, I, I ended up buying it on xbox yeah yeah i got it off of i rented it in hd off of uh amazon and it looked fantastic i can't believe how good this movie looks when it's upscaled to 1080p i'm glad i didn't watch like a 720 like shitty internet copy because they must have remastered it at some point oh yeah it's been re-released like 10 times since it came out yeah um in- including a blu-ray i believe but uh this fucking movie is 40 years old guys yeah and it looks great but there are you know there's some seams that show at points um some of the optics and rotoscoping and uh rear projection and matte paintings the matte paintings look amazing matte paintings were good except for it's... um the matte painting of looking down the pit uh, i yeah. thought looked really bad i thought it wasn't it looked really like a, it looked like a cartoon but anytime that there was like a background matte painting, they always look great. And I didn't really notice any rotoscope r- rotoscoping really. Um, but I feel like it like I can I can kind of see it in my head, I but I, I thought I come on, Steve. Calling you out, just kidding. I wasn't I didn't say that to call you out. I just don't I legitimately don't remember. But this is the era. I know there was like lightning and stuff. That was probably right. Sorry, I was wrong. Um, I had to look up rotoscoping. I used the wrong word. It it was the um, when they project um, the images behind them. You can see like the white line around them. Just... The whole ending of the movie. You mean when? Uh, yeah, like, there was and so much like, unnecessary it? rear projection. Yeah, and there's a couple of parts throughout where that happens. But I, I think they probably just couldn't figure out how to make it look tranquil and heavenly without. Uh, without building a million different sets and they just want to like let's just use this set and we'll figure it out later and also keep it at least all looking the same like they yeah. if they just cut to agra and she and she just had like a perfectly white background that was clearly like her on like in the same room as the background and then they cut to the spectral beings ascending to to, to the heavens with the gefflings sitting in front it was so weird too during that scene where he like looks up and it's supposed to be a big deal that he's like crying tears and it, it looks so like this is so cheesy. like all right don't blink it's a puppet. <laughs> don't blink the puppet <laughs> we've tried this 45 <laughs> times um ilm worked on it they did a lot of the special effects for that stuff that we're talking about right now but uh, it was the early days, you know, they hadn't even gotten to Return of the Jedi yet or they had perfected their abilities. Which, which still has all the same kind of effects in it, really, like the same kind of yeah, the same kind of animatronic and, and puppeteering, the same kind of like, like I it wasn't CGI at the time, really. It was more like they just put it like the, the electricity when Palpatine's like unlimited power yeah ultimate. that's rotoscoping where you like yeah basically like paint onto the film God. itself yeah. yeah um there wasn't a ton of that but like no one was really casting magic balls at each other in this movie as i had thought that's, they would that's true i thought there was going to be more actual magic i did like the uh there were a lot of like scenes that went on too long that clearly pad this movie out and that's when you know movies that have really long padded out scenes for no reason are very much that's a kid's movie trope uh, one that pops into my head is just the fucking Skeksis eating for like five minutes. I'm like, why, why am I watching them all have different ways of eating? I guess it's fun. But the other one that I did like was when they're in the hanging with the podlings right before they get invaded by the, the Gethrim. And Potato they're just people. They're just partying, man. Yeah, they're they're little gnome. Those guys make me the most uncomfortable. Why? Because <laughs> like when, they, when they have their essence sucked out of them, they look like nightmares. Yeah. And I don't know, they just look like a like a pantyhose full of dirt. Like this, you know, like, kind of nasty looking to me. Uh, Zipret says it's nice to see the three Bogusis together. <laughs> just as a side. Am I a Bogusi? We should all get a sword that says Bogusi on it. The Bogusi boys. Actually, earlier, 
earlier when I said we should have bios on our Twitch, I was thinking you should draw the three of us and then we should have little blurbs under us that are like, that sit like right underneath the, sit right underneath the video when you're on the internet, on the, on quotes, the browser. Famous quotes. Famous <laughs> quotes, like everything is Final Fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and steve's is how do i get out of this final fantasy corner they keep pushing me back in <laughs> they won't then, let me leave and then caitlin's quote has nothing to do with final fantasy just <laughs> it'll really just non sequitur yeah. it's just what is final fantasy question <laughs> Amica? Amica Amica? Uh, For, there was one moment where um they're going through like the forest or something and he's like in a swamp or something like that and i don't know why but it reminded me of princess bride for like a quick second it's like another right movie of through. this from this era you know like i i can see that yeah because they had those rat and crazy rat. crazy studio sets and yeah the rat yeah. puppet and because it's a fantasy movie that's why it reminded you i wish there was one human in this movie and it was just andre the giant was just in it for some reason because <laughs> he was the, a peanut <laughs> he was like the he was a rock level level famous in the 80s so you know they didn't use him that often but when they did it was a banger role <laughs> he was great in the princess bride did that's you know that apparently there are princess bride sequels i didn't even know that that i existed. what I think they're straight to DVD sh- bullshit from the 90s. Only the Deadpool one. That's the only one I know. What? The uh, like very Deadpool Christmas or whatever, where it's kind of like a Princess Bride kind of parody. I don't know if that's considered a sequel. <laughs> also, is it, is it animated or is it a comic <laughs> book? It's it's the movie, but it's it's like it's like a PG version of the movie, and Deadpool has kidnapped uh what's his name fred savage or whatever right fred savage and mm-hmm. um and and he's he's like doing the thing that colombo does where he's telling reading the story of deadpool to him actually yeah i think i did see that it's just it's like a web video right i don't know if they've made a physical version of it uh seems like a dvd a extra theater. for deadpool 2 well it was a theater release and you can like find it on okay. on the internet like download I have to it. look this up because it's why does it feel vaguely familiar i think it's called a very deadpool christmas or something like that very deadpool christ mass special um once upon a deadpool yeah that's the one wow it <laughs> exists it does exist what is deadpool christmas somebody was just like straight up we might have to watch this trailer on the trailer show this week. We should write it down this time because the last time we forgot what we were talking about. Amica? <laughs> Amica? <laughs> yeah, we'll have to investigate this. I think it has something to do with Deadpool too because he Fred Savage was in it. Or he kidnaps Fred Savage. Yeah. It's, it's not Deadpool 2. It's like Deadpool 1.5. Cool. I it's can't worth a watch. Seen, it's it's yeah. basically just like it's like you could watch just their scenes as its own thing, like a bonus feature or whatever, uh, which I don't think they've actually put on the DVD. I'm sure there's a way to buy it somehow, but it's like it's 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 a PG version of the movie, and then they have it spliced throughout with it, with scenes with him and Fred Savage. Oh, okay, okay, cool, 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 cool. cool. Cool, 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 cool. cool if you guys cool. want to hear some more of the story, also an, a reason why I wanted to do the story like this is because this is kind of like a storybook that we did. So I'm reading the story to you guys like it's a storybook. I'm sure it's super there boring, is. but it's a podcast. So when we make the vid- the audio version, this will be. Can we biggest... talk about the duality in life and that we need both good and evil to be whole? I love to talk about the duality of man, um, but that's more of like a final act conversation. So let me just. This one's long too. Let me just get through this. Jen and Kira discovered a Geflink civilization with ancient rain described describing the prophecy when single shines the triple sun. Uh, what was sundered and undone shall be whole. The, the two made one by Geflink hand or else by none. They are interrupted by Sexil. Sexil. What? Who? Sex, Skexil. Skexil. Who, Skexil who reveals the prophecy was the reason for the Geffling genocide. Genocide! They don't say genocide in this movie. While trying to trick them into coming 
with him to the castle. But the Gethlings run off and reach the castle on land striders. Those are those nightmare beasts that they ride around on, intercepting the Githrim that attacks attacked Kira's village. While trying to f- free the captured podlings, Kira, Jen, and F- Fizgig descend the castle's dry moat, revealing Kira has wings, and use the catacombs to gain access. Uh, but they are intercepted by Skeksil, who attempts to drag them to the other Skeksis when they refuse him further. Jen stabs Skeksil's hand with the Shard of Defiance. See, they didn't say that it was called the Shard of Defiance, did they? Maybe Augra said it at one point? Which leads to his mystic counterpart, Ursul, Steve Ursul, to, to receive. Did I uh, do like... that? <laughs> Did I shatter the dark crystal? Receive a similar wound on his. <laughs> and Skexel, in a fit of rage, buries Jen in a cave and takes Kira. Skexel is reinstated as Chamberlain and gives Kira to the scientist, Skektek, to be. <laughs> He's the dream. robot Skexis. <laughs> I am Skektek, to be drained of her life. Danger, essence. danger. <laughs> Gelfling, Danger well, the Skeksis, yeah. uh, for the Skeksis to drink and regain their youth. Uh, I would have liked to see one fully regain its youth, though, because we only see one shot of his like skin like hardening. Um, Argra, imprisoned in the scientist's laboratory, tells Kira to call the captive animals for help. They break free in response and free Kira while causing she- Skektek to fall down the crystal shaft to his death. Uh, at that moment, the, his mystic counterpart, Urte, Urte, vanishes in a burst of flame. Um, Agra frees herself soon after Kira uh, leaves and before Jen arrives. And I'm now just realizing that every, every single um, Ura and every single Skeksis. Skeksis have counterparts. And that's why the emperors at the beginning disappeared at the same time. Um, yeah, they're all the same person. <laughs> yeah like so weird it's cool I think that goes it's into a very what, fantasy thing but like that's what Kaylin was going to ask though about the the duality of evil versus dark and you can't have dark yeah, without evil thing. you can't you know and then i mean every fantasy story is essentially about that at the end of the day like lord of the rings is about that star wars is about that final fantasy in a lot of ways is about that it's, they're all yeah it's, it's just, just very different. basic. Uh, it's a very basic story that they'll just expand upon, right? And this yeah. is sort of like the most simple representation of that story where it's like one guy dies, the other guy dies because they're connected because one is the evil part and one is the good part of the same person. But right? the Gelfings are like the... I wanted to relate this a lot to uh, Link and Zelda as well. Um, this kind of remind Legend of Zelda clearly took a little bit of inspiration from the gel things because at the What's beginning the guy's name with the big sword from final fantasy cloud um okay. the thing the thing the reason why i bring that up is because the whole thing with zelda with link to the past games is that every generation in hyrule a new hero emerges and they kind of tell a story similar to that at the beginning where the where the ura is telling uh jen that like every there's like every thousand years a hero emerges to stop like a great evil basically and the narrator at the beginning is like, for a time it was civil, and then a uh, Gelfing appeared, and that you know the counterpart or whatever the fuck it's called, is the reason why the you know the war is starting back up. Now the war has ended in a day. It seems like it seems like <laughs> Jen and Kira just go and they're fucking Kira sacrifices herself, and Jen gets all sad, and he doesn't really do a lot of fighting. It's not a lot of he stabs a crystal. Yeah, he's not a lot of there's not a lot of combat in this movie. Which I was he kind of climbs the, that yeah, compared to Muppet Treasure Island, where Kermit is ripping it with that sword. The swashbuckling adventure starring Kermit versus a fucking very slow Tim it's Curry. It's the longest hour and a half <laughs> fucking movie ever is The Dark Crystal. Um, I saw the runtime and I was like, yes. And then I got 40 <laughs> minutes in and I was like, this may as well be. There's still hours. 40 minutes left. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I kind of felt the same way. Uh, um, I was like, what else do you need? Like, why do they keep showing long ass scenes of fucking Skeksis eating for literally five minutes? Because <laughs> they made that all that, all those props. They're like, we got to get all the, our money's worth out of these props. Um, that's the other thing is like, there isn't a lot of deeper meaning to a lot of the scenes. Like a lot of the scenes are just scenes where it's like, get here to there. And then we'll have some sort of ex- exposition that's dumped by a witch or a wizard or whatever. And then it's more like, 
we'll put them in this new interesting environment. And I, I, I know I brought up Final Fantasy, or not Final Fantasy, never ending story already, but the difference is, is like they go to one area that is like overgrown mossy fantasy location to another area that looks pretty much the same yeah. and then it's like dusty mountain and then it's desert and you're just like there's not crazy uh varying fantasy Which, biomes that biome wise that's literally what it looks like on earth it literally goes like forest swamp dusty yeah. mountain desert <laughs> i know that but we're not on earth we're in a fantasy world I that's why i'm agreeing no, i'm agreeing with you when yeah. you see something like the never-ending story they go they go through like a swamp forest that has like a giant snail in it and quicksand and then like, right there it's already more interesting because they're they're interacting with these different elements of the forest you know yeah. that's the only part of, that's the only biome i really remember so i'm just taking your your word for it on that movie well they go to like the top of like a mountain but it's nighttime and the sky is like full of stars and then yeah. they go to like a crazy canyon and then they go to a, a crazy blizzard world and then that's like they true. just keep and then it's like all and it's not like he's traveling great distances to get to them it's almost like zelda where like you just go to this edge of the map and then boom you're in a pure desert area he um, he flies falcor and goes falcor <laughs> Well, Atreyu does that. Or, no, Atreyu doesn't do that. Bastion does that at the end. He flies around making wishes or whatever to wish the world back. But Atreyu uses his horse the whole time and then Falcor finds him dying and then saves him. And then he flies him for like two seconds and then accidentally dumps him off. <laughs> He's like, uh-oh. Oops, I, would have, I would have rather watched The NeverEnding Story Part 3 because I'm more interested in how that movie shits the bed than Jack Black's in it. <laughs> He's like, yeah, he's yeah. like a teenager or a kid, right? Um, is he the main character of the third movie? Okay. He's the main bully. He's the bully. I was just going to say, is he, or is he the bully? But um, in the in the third one, the bullies are reading the never ending story. So they're like in the in other there? movies. Is, well, they're reading, final... they're in like a library reading it, and Jack Black is doing his like, hmm, like reading through the speaking, book. Speaking of Final Fantasy, I can, I can tie never ending story <laughs> to uh, the Dark Crystal uh no i can't i guess i can because in okay in, in final fantasy tactics advanced the the whole thing is predicated uh, on these kids being bullied and they they find a book and it takes they read about ivalis which is the, the place where final fantasy 12 and tactics take place so they get transported into the book much like the never-ending story and the numu are from that from that world and they look exactly like the the Ura or whatever they're called. Aru, I did it. The Uwu, the Uwu girls. The Uwus. <laughs> oh, I think the Fritz actually said that earlier, <laughs> or possibly Miyagi. And I was like, Uwu. I'm not gonna be like one of those streamer e girls who says Uwu. Uwu. <laughs> You're welcome. Like Clip it. that, and everybody wow, we can. Just got, we just lost 15 subscribers. <laughs> We only had 15 subscribers. <laughs> we have my wife's subscri subscription left and she doesn't even watch anything that I produce. Uh, well, when you guys get a baby, she'll watch the baby. I don't know. But she'll get super mad when I try to put it in, put it in pictures. Put it in pictures. <laughs> I'm making uh, content with the baby. Stop putting our baby on the internet. Yeah. Do, you wanna, cool. do you want me to read this last part? It's... Uh, not very long. Sure. All right. The three suns begun to align as the Gefflings reunite at the Crystal Chamber and the Skeksis gather for the ritual that will grant them more immortality. I have one beer and I really can't read. Uh, when they are discovered <laughs> and the Gethrim attack, Jen leaps onto the crystal but drops the shard. Kira takes it after Fizzgig is thrown down the shaft by Skekung but is saved by Ugra shortly after. Kira. It's must have been like, a nightmare on set to like keep track of all these fucked up names. Like the, uh, the show God. Bible for this movie was it was probably a nightmare. Uh, Kira throws the shard back to Jen and is fatally stabbed by the ritual master Skekzok. The heartbroken Jen plunges the shard into the dark crystal, fulfilling the prophecy. The Gethrim uh, disintegrates. And the podling slaves uh, regain their essence while the dark stone covering the castle crumbles away to reveal a crystalline structure. That's another thing. That's kind of like um, 
the Fortress of Solitude. That's what that reminded me of that moment. The Uru, Uwu, uh, arrived to use the crystal to merge themselves and the Skeksis into beings they once were, the angelic Urskex. The Urskex leader explains to Jen they had mistakenly shattered the crystal a thousand years ago, splitting them into two races and decimating Thra. And that Jen's courage and Kira's sacrifice a classic whoopsies them. or Whoop, ooh, ooh, as we call it. <laughs> <laughs> the Urskex revive Kira in gratitude and then ascend to a higher level of existence, leaving the crystal of truth to Jen and Kira on the now rejuvenated Thera. They're like, oh, thank you for, we'll bring your friend back and thank you for saving your planet, but we're, we're out of here. Now we uh, must return to our home planet. We are needed <laughs> there. <laughs> You know, a classic Pucci situation. Yeah, they were killed by an asteroid on the way back. <laughs> yeah. So I thought I had missed, like, I watched this movie pretty intently. And at the end, I was like, did I miss something? Because that seemed real content dry. But I just reread it and I could have just read that no, synopsis. It's, it's and like I was saying, gotten... it kind of feels, it feels a little hollow at the end. You know, you're just like, okay, <laughs> movie's over. Yeah. Uh, and I think I, I attribute that to you not really feeling any kind of emotional connection to the main characters outside of the fact that they're supposed to be cute. If you're um, 10 or even if you're seven. Yeah, when you're if sort you're of... 10, you're just enthralled with the visuals. You're like, whoa, look at all this crazy shit. And then you start drawing Skeksis and Gelflings and whatever the other mystics. And then you get a bit older and you start drawing Skeksis fucking the Gelflings. Never got into that phase. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody that draws draws their own material. Yep. Pretty sure I can say that that's not true. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Maybe more so than either of you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if I've ever. Wait, have I ever drawn a penis? <laughs> I mean, I've definitely drawn a penis for sure, but I've never drawn a Skeksis fucking uh, uwu or whatever. <laughs> I, I did draw a a monkey or no sorry I drew an alien fucking a monkey. Why? And like, <laughs> because that's uh, that was kind of like my interpretation of where we came from. Because that is my fetish. That was your interpretation of where we came from. Yeah, like people. <laughs> no, I know what you meant. I'm just like, when, <laughs> when did you stop believing this? And please tell me you don't still believe it. <laughs> that's how humans were made. Aliens fucked monkeys. And now there are here. theories that are sort of adjacent to that theories not scientific <laughs> theories rooted okay, in the fact or science <laughs> conspiracy theories <laughs> there are theories but who <laughs> who who is the one that has these theories um anti-vaxxers pr primarily oh i blame it on the lead poisoning <laughs> the magnets yeah the magnets in my body I'm filled with magnets. As soon as the Great Reckoning happens, my I'm going to be flung all asunder. It'll be beamed up easier than everybody else oh, by the no. aliens that banged a monkey to so make Del us. So Delma Grimes is here and hasn't <laughs> said a word until we brought up conspiracy theories. We're talking about Sweet. The Dark is Crystal. This the I, I think this is the person that I'm going to be friends with. Yes. You, Kaylin, go into Delma Grimes' chat. She, she usually streams from like 8 a.m. to about 11. I'm always in there. I'm, I'm the guy that's always in there being like, what's up? Um, Steve, has, Steve has been in being like, what's up as well? No, I say Star Trek. And then we talk about Star Trek. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Delma. Delma Grimes, ladies and gentlemen. The, uh, she, she actually invented Minecraft and she invented Twitch. So. Oh my God. Look out for her. Thank you. Ascen ascension. Sponsor us. Genius. Um, <laughs> she's the high. Okay. Uh, so we've run out of things to talk about for this movie. And oh, that, does, that, doesn't hap that doesn't happen very often on this show because... A clean hour. Well, we didn't talk about how Frank Oz co-directed the movie. Well, tell us about how Frank Oz co-directed the movie, Steve. I just that's, did. That's your wheelhouse. Oh, that's um, just that's just. Well, one I mean, second. as we all, as as most people know, <laughs> Frank Oz is the voice of many Muppets, and predominantly Miss Piggy is, is the big one. But he also does Yoda. He's done Yoda in almost everything. Oh, Miss Piggy and Yoda, I hear it. I'm sorry. What I was talking. I can hear it. I, sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you. I was just 
adding on, I can hear Yoda and Miss Piggy now. Like I can hear, I can hear it. You know why? They're both Frank Oz. Uh, I'm also- pretty sure Frank Oz was also the Chamberlain, right? Because that mm, that he keeps doing through it the whole movie sounds exactly like Yo- Yoba. Yobi? Yobi Karobi. Yobi it would have been Bobi. so good if they named Grogu, Grogu Yobi. Um, Frank Oz in this movie did not play the Chamberlain. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. I was about to say, I know the noise you're talking about, and I don't believe that it was Frank Oz, because mm-hmm. I am very, very well-versed in the in the grumblings of Frank Oz. But Frank Oz is also a good director, too. He's directed lots of movies. And funny anecdotal tale is... There so what you're telling me is Frank Oz was not in the Yoda suit? No, but his hand was right up the Yoda suit's butt. Okay. But, He's very yeah. good at articulating Yoda's face to make him seem like a real alien creature. Yeah, he's um, good at like pursing the lips and stuff. And also, <laughs> like Yoda is 100%. They spent so much time just perfecting the way that he looks and the ears moving and stuff. Like, whereas the Gelflings are just kind of like, mark, 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 mark. There was, a, there was a really fun scene when they were having the, uh, the memory fast or whatever the fuck. Mem- what? thing where memory they were fuck? showing their their memories and the, for just like a second they showed jen as a kid just like with one arm splashing in the water and i'm like they use that puppet for that like 10 like five second scene what happens to these puppets that are used for like moments do they descend do, do they take them apart and use the materials or are they in like a weird hollywood vault that's just filled with puppets disintegrating well i can't speak for this movie but i know that uh gremlins 2 they they made like 150 gremlin puppets um, and arms and all sorts of stuff. And they just auction them off. And you can, you can probably buy a gremlin puppet on eBay right now if you wanted to, but uh, you can get the teenage, depends on the movie. Teenage mutant Ninja turtle um, math or math. Y- yeah. Know. You could, they They're found all... the originals of the Ninja turtle costumes in like a, a locker and they had disintegrated to dust basically. Yeah. And they look horrifying. Del McGrimes has a theory about the aliens and monkeys thing um, that I, I assume is true because, you know, she invented Twitch. Um, it, it was aliens that genetically modif- modified Earth primates into humans, which is why our brains grew so fast. So, And she's a scientist and a historian. Well, I'm on, I'm on team Delma. It's like the movie uh, Prometheus, where the big pale marble men came down and put some shit in the water and then we all evolved from it played by michael uh, fassbender so you know the the dong along was huge he didn't play one of those things. Oh, I, I thought he played he was, a robot he played oh, an android named david i thought the android named david was the alien because i've never seen prometheus so oh, I've only seen well, maybe you should watch it because it's good is it a prequel yeah. is it a prequel to alien movies is it yes. in the yeah. same universe yes is yeah. it a prophecy a prophecy uh, i don't know do <laughs> i was trying to i was gonna ask if it was a prometheus but that's not it it's, it's prometheus was the guy that stole the fire from the gods and gave it to yeah. humanity um and that's why the movie is about that because we stole from the aliens or whatever hey, um, that robot's hung <laughs> probably <laughs> or tiny like the statues of like the statue of david or whatever um what was i gonna say oh frank oz frank oz directed a movie with marlon brando and um robert de niro and every time Frank Oz would give uh, Marlon Brando direction, he would refuse to listen to it. So Frank Oz started <laughs> having to like tell Robert De Niro to give Marlon Brando direction because <laughs> he, he couldn't figure out why. And eventually Robert De Niro went up to Frank Oz and was like, uh, basically he just says, he's not taking any fucking directions from Miss Piggy. <laughs> so disrespectful. Seems like uh, Marlon Brando just did that on every set he went to though. Cause he had a similar thing before he read in the heart of darkness. Uh, he showed up to set to be like, fuck this movie. And he was just acting like a nightmare in apocalypse now. And then they were, the director was like, go read this thing. And he went in t- and the next day he emerged in character as Colonel Clink or whatever, Colonel Kurt, uh, Kurtz. Apocalypse Now. No? Apocalypse Now. I don't know enough about Apocalypse close. Now to, to speak to it. It's amazing. It's more like last I've week. I've seen it, but I haven't seen it in a while. Was it last trailer show? I think Miyagi asked what our favorite movies were possibly Zafritz or maybe Dex. Somebody asked. 
when our therapy yeah and we weren't started. allowed to think and i just like exploded out with the evil dead 2 <laughs> which i don't know if i if i stand by that but i, am I said sort of dressed like ash right now i said basketball like basketball because i still my favorite comedy of all time oh i've got an update from delma uh, she gets all her info from the conspiracy theory subreddit, so it must be true. I go to that subreddit when uh, shit's hitting the fan in the real world to see what the conspiracy theorists think. Right. And then later I realize how inaccurate it all is because uh, there's a lot of speculation. People like to say on that subreddit, doesn't it just feel like things are different? Doesn't it just feel like things are weird nowadays? And I'm like, yeah because things change yeah remember we had a like, pandemic that like fucked up the whole planet <laughs> things are most definitely different fucked up the whole socio-political climate for north america yeah now we can't make movies like the dark crystal anymore because everyone's too scared because of 9-11 yeah I blame that's the 9/11. real conspiracy yeah. anyway so i've gone through most of my notes i did my rant about final fantasy um i don't have a whole lot more to say about the old dark crystal rooney I don't think so either, but uh, I don't know. We can go into final thoughts, I guess. We could do that. I am the, I'm just going to, I'm just quickly, you know what? I, I think that uh, I would like a frizz gig action figure. Um, do we know if they ever made a, like a frizz gig you could take home? It did have kind of nightmare teeth, but also my pet monster had nightmare teeth. So I'm sure with frizz, the, with the television show that came out, like McFarlane <laughs> toys or some shit probably made some super articulated no, you can, get a, you can get a frizz gig plush. plush. Holy shit. It looks it looks too cute. But people have made like realistic looking ones with like the double teeth. Right. I want it. I need it. I need it now. It actually kind of looks like the My Pet Monster. It's got like the hard. I like had one hard of those mouth, My Pet Monsters. And it's like furry with like the like the plastic eyes. Yeah, I loved my pet monster. My pet monster, he's a monster, and my pet or whatever the fuck. You're singing Muppet Babies. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> right. Um, okay, yeah, final thoughts, and we'll get out of here a little early tonight. Um, we've had a Ooh. we've had a couple weeks of heavy, heavy streaming. Um I like playing games by myself uh, on a different level again. Um, but I'm going to do lots more streaming for the people because that's what they want to see. Yeah. Practical hey. effects are the best these days. They just CGI everything. Delmograms, you couldn't be more correct. Delma, uh, with you. I will say my final thoughts and then you will say your final thoughts and then we will all go to bed. And if you don't go to bed, then you're fired from this show. <laughs> I don't know if you have the power to fire us. Well, I do. This is uh, do I'm the boss. I'm the, co- I'm the host this week. The whoever's host is boss for that week. Okay. Okay. Remind me to fire you next week. <laughs> yeah, I re- You get fired. You get rehired. And I'm going to be dressed host. in full David Bowie regalia. Hey, Jason, you're fired. Are we going to take a break for the long weekend of July? That uh, sound cool. We'll talk about it. Or not long weekend, but like. Were you saying something about dude like three for July? Maybe we talk about this later and then we'll make we'll an talk update about once it. we know. We'll talk about it. We're yeah. taking a, a unlimited hiatus. We're next we're not doing any more anything ever again because you're all fired and I quit. <laughs> anyway, um, so for final thoughts, I do really enjoy the um aesthetic of this movie. I do really enjoy the fact that I was able to pick little moments out that have clearly been repurposed in other pop culture and other movies and and television and final fantasy specifically and and the ghibli film revelation that i had i felt like it was a big i thought you guys would think it was a bigger deal (laughs) and i was like this scene where the thing happens in the water and then the little dinosaur guy gets eaten by the rock i was like that's some that feels like one of those scenes in princess mononoke where you're just looking at things happening in the woods you guys didn't react that way um, well, I don't, sometimes an epiphany is more of a personal experience, more of a personal shared, experience yeah, right. than a shared um, one. Yeah. But you're right. I, uh, I, I had moments of levity with this movie where I really enjoyed myself and I had a lot of fun watching it. But then I get real bored, real bored. And then and the cracks start to show where you see the like them riding the land stalkers around and they're 
bopping around like the the puppets in Team America, you know. So I want to like I would give this movie like a technical four point five for the time, but unfortunately the the story is held up by like good ver- good versus evil. A boy emerges and must find his counterpart woman, and they must take down like they're almost like the good and evil but they're not they're both good it's more like the good and the sacrifice versus the evil and the good um i know that's it's i feel like you're about to have another epiphany i just had a little (laughs) a mini epiphany you know you know you know when you don't epiphany all the way and just have like a little tiny epiphany yeah it's like a sneeze you're like i can't get it out (laughs) that's not the metaphor i was gonna use baby okay Um, (laughs) yeah sorry uh metaphors Man of horse skin. Um, my uh, <laughs> low hanging fruit. Get out of here. Okay, I'm fine. <laughs> I give it three out of five. Unfortunate. It's an unfortunate three out of five because I want to give this movie a four point five. I just can't. It's this. There's no depth to the story, and all of the, all of the, um, the lore comes in like uh, content dumps. Fuck. I can't think of that word that I say all the time. Um, acquisition dumps exposition Expedition, exposition dumps also i think steve is frozen no i think he's just contemplating forever oh, oh he might be frozen am i frozen no you're fine is he messing with us steve are you messing with us no there's no way you could sit that still for that long uh let's try let me see impossible Impossible. No, he's frozen on stream too. I thought we were frozen on stream. Yeah, so, my eyes. Kalen, I need. You know, let's all. Let's all. Let's all do it. <clears throat> okay, let's try. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry. No, let's try it again. Let's try it again. <laughs> yes, okay. That'll put butts in seats. Kalen, I need you to make your final thoughts be about four minutes long can you do that buddy I, yeah take your ready time. i'm okay. ready <laughs> <laughs> um so wow um his computer just barfed itself yeah that's uh chat with him get him back i will i will entertain our viewers um i watched this uh he'll be back Oh, so this is my first time seeing the movie. Um, definitely from a technical standpoint, I, I think it was well done for sure. Um, the creatures did look the like all everything like I felt looked pretty good. Um, I thought the Geflings looked cute or whatever. There was definitely, uh, like you're saying, like they 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 didn't have the quality to like emote or whatever. Um, you know expressions um but they, they look cute or whatever little woodland creatures um the there was a moment i think like halfway through or something when one of the mist or no when uh jen cuts one of the skexies and then one of them and then it cuts to a shot of the mystics traveling and one of the mystics hands starts to bleed i'm like oh they're connected somehow what's going on here and then at the end, you know, they they were once one, and then the crystal separated them, or whatever. And then they were brought back together to to save the day. And uh, it it just made me think, like what I was saying earlier about just the duality of what in life, and you know, uh, we need both to be full. And also, actually, kind of ties in a little bit with what. Uh, Steve made a comment about, uh, I guess, Jim Henson being of the mind that kids should be exposed to things so that, um, you know, that, you know, they can, you know, gives them growth, you know, develop, you know, be exposed to different things, Uh, which also reminds me of, uh, I think it was something that Socrates said, um, which is essentially along the same lines of like, so someone who's never dealt with any hardships when they're when they face one or whatever they're not going to know what to do whereas someone who has you know been through hardships or whatever they're going to be more able to deal with something if it were ever to occur and uh uh you know the 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 strongest of steels 
are forged in the harshest of situations or whatever. Um, basically, what I'm trying to say is you can't have good without bad. You can't have bad without good. They're kind of hand in hand. You need both to be full. And, you know, bad things in life, you know, if you live through them, make you better and stronger. Um, yeah, duality. Uh, we need to be good and bad. Or whatever. Actually, it also reminds me of a, I have an idea for a three disc album that maybe I'll make one day. And it's kind of like a, a good and evil and then a whole. Um, that's all I'm going to tell you, though. I don't want you to steal my idea. Uh, but uh, I, I mean, give this. It, you like it? I like it a lot. Are you gonna do? Because I know you've made a couple of rap tracks. Is it gonna be beats that you t- tell stories and rap over, or is it gonna be anyway? It's. I'm not sure if it's gonna be rap per se, but for right now, let's say yes. Okay. It'll be some sort of musical, and then rapping, real like a rap opera. <laughs> a rap opera. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Classic rap opera. <laughs> I would say um, I would say uh, Man on the Moon one and two are kind of a rap r- r- kind of rap rose in in a similar sure. kind of a way. It Man <laughs> on the Moon three was good, but it definitely felt separate from those two for sure. He was making he um, went he started uh, as Kid Cudi got more popular and more famous. More he started, but also. Be- going more towards pop music you know like not doing the stuff for him as much anymore but doing the stuff for a broader audience and i think that's yeah. if you listen to his like his like mixtapes compared to his late like his late albums oh, mixtapes are so good mixtapes are the best shit and man on the yeah. moon one is the best shit and man on the moon yeah. two is where i start to fa- fall start to fall off kid cutty myself right <clears throat> but uh anyway I, sorry <laughs> continue no it's all good it's all good that's 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 what i like i like a little bit of, a little bit of tangent keeps things bouncy um bouncy, bouncy. i <laughs> i uh i give this movie a uh uh finding your other half in life to become whole uh but then it feels a little lackluster <laughs> I mean, you, I was about to be like, I agree with you because I found my other half. Uh, it doesn't feel lackluster. I found my like, I did find my other half. You know, what your I mean? best friend, my best friend, who's also my my wife. Um, wife. And it's it's great uh, having a, a teammate. I guess I think that's what I'm talking about. Um, I I feel like ultimately the story between Kira and. Uh, and Jen wasn't played as a love story, which is something we didn't really touch or talk about during the the bulk. Oh, Steve's back, uh, but I'm going to finish Yay. this thought um, because they they could have ver- they could have leaned on that, but they did more of a like later Luke and Leia once they've realized they're not brother and sister. They mm. do sort of a Luke and Leia thing where they're they seem more like just learning about each other and not. I don't think it was played for love. Did you? We we didn't touch on that on the main show, Steve, but I didn't think that Jen and Kira were really. It wasn't really played as a love story so much as a as a. No, not at all. Like brother and sister almost. Um, a I kin. Mean, they were like a kin. Yeah, it was yeah. like. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't feel like uh, there was meant to be a sort of a romantic undertone in any way to me, but. You know, I think they were like, let's just deal with spooky shit and not have to worry about <laughs> sexuality. Speaking of spooky shit, Steve, why don't you take us home with your final thoughts? Kalen got real, uh, real deep. Oh, <laughs> too to bad I missed it. You'll have to go back and watch. It was good stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is my... why we don't get trashed on the show, my 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 guy. What? Are you talking I don't about understand. Me? No. Oh, okay i'm talking to kalen oh you're talking about getting drunk don't get yeah this is <laughs> those moments of levity come the more sober you are i just want to i just want to say that you can do whatever you want i don't think we'll ever get back you're to trying to give me Keaton. positive uh what's that called positive reinforcement is what you did yes right you did a you did a <laughs> remarkable job today um i just i agree uh and i also i'm sorry i missed your epiphany did he have one too he quoted socrates dude verbatim (laughs) verbatim 
He had a couple uh, or whatevers, but you know. Or whatever that guy was saying. <laughs> that is definitely one of my common like talking traits habits or whatever oh the there it you, is the <laughs> more you talk the, it's me with ums when i was young i had a debate teacher who was like just don't say um and it took me literally 15 years to stop saying um between everything i still say like all the time and they're little they're little um speech ticks that people have and the more that you talk the more that you talk in this kind of like uh public speaking you'll fill the, instead of saying um or ah uh or like or whatever, you'll fill it with saying other words and just continuing your sentence to fill, thought, the, yeah. to fill the, to the, fill the dead air. I you'll see, um, um, uh, whatever, like, um. <laughs> Can I get to my final thoughts? We'll, give, <laughs> we'll give him some allocution letters, lessons after this. Um, okay, so. <laughs> my final thoughts i'm also kind of annoyed that i didn't hear yours kaylin because i don't want to retread anything that you might have said no so, you're not uh, gonna retread you're fine i'll try and uh Thelma Graham uh, said i give you guys a 10 out of 10 so that's that's her well, we give you at a, a 10 out of 10 as well it's true um Thanks, so Stella. i don't know i think i think we all kind of fall into the same boat on the fact that this movie wasn't exactly what we were expecting um but you know we're adults this movie's not made for us it's made for tiny children. I'm sure that if I had watched this on VHS from beginning to end as a kid and not just snippets here and there on cable when it was playing during the holidays or whatever, I might have might have had a softer spot in my heart for it. I might have watched, enjoyed this watch through a little bit more. I am interested to go back and watch the series now that I have watched the movie from beginning to end and have context for it, though I think that it is sort of its own sort of story. Separate from this, they kind of deal with the same sort of um, themes but hopefully it's, it's a little less hollow in terms of how you feel about the characters. Uh, that is one of my main complaints about the movie that I've said throughout the review so far has been that I didn't really care about any character in this movie. It was more about the, um, it was more about the value in terms of an art form, something that we don't really see a lot of anymore, unfortunately, because to do a production like this, it's ridiculous to have an entire story told specifically specifically through very beautiful looking puppetry and you know you have to have a group of masters in the room to be able to pull something like this off it's not like making a normal movie they've got to build a set that's six to eight feet off of the ground so you've got a bunch of people underneath with their arms going through the ground right and you know a lot of these costumes look like they probably would take more than one person to operate successfully um and i think that's where the the value of this movie exists it's a piece of art history that is worth watching if nothing more than for that value is to to watch um the vision of a genius a, a genius storyteller um really shoot for the stars and you know maybe the final result isn't as great as it could be but for what he was trying to achieve it's it's really beautiful to look at I will agree with you, Jason, that after the first sort of opening monologue and the scene of, you know, the, the emperor dying and the battle over the, who's going to hold the emperor's scepter after that, um, I kind of started to like, my eyes were drifting to my phone. I'm like, no, I have to concentrate. <laughs> Must not go on TikTok. I need to watch this, <laughs> these puppets solve the problem. They should remake this movie on TikTok and I bet it'll get a billion <laughs> likes. Um, you know, even the potato people that I didn't really I, kind of made me more uncomfortable than anything else in the movie. Like there's still, there's still value there to um, take in. Um, the music is amazing throughout the movie. I've been using the music from the Dark Crystal in my D and D campaigns and stuff for years um, without ever having that sort of nostalgic value connected to it. It evokes imagination when you listen to it. If you listen to it completely separately from the movie, you start to, you know, find yourself imagining, wondering, and picturing things, not necessarily connected with this, but wherever your own mind kind of flows um, and ebbs from the music itself. Um, the art that this was based on is truly worthwhile if you're into illustration at all. All of the work by um, Brian Froud is really cool um and you can find a lot of it online but you know i'm considering maybe even purchasing one of these uh, omnibuses just because i've got a lot of art books and i like them i like to look at them um you know the 
inconsistency between visuals with the special effects I can let go and just sort of like focus on the matte paintings and the puppetry and the craftsmanship and the costumes and the monsters and all that kind of stuff. It's really great. But unfortunately, I'm going to have to give this movie one giant crystal with a big old crack in it. <laughs> uh I'm just looking at Brian Froud's work right now. That's an excellent uh, rating for this too, because I, I do like the, I do like this the framing of the story that it's like you, they just had to get a piece of a crystal back to another giant crystal, and I as soon as they don't need, they don't even really explain that till well into the movie, but as soon as I was like, oh, it's a crystal with a crack in it. Oh, uh, they gotta get the. Uh, they gotta get the they gotta get the pieces back. But they, they like they explain the that within the like crystal. the first five minutes of the movie, right? Like that's the yeah. the whole opening is them being like, "This is what you're about to see." <laughs> you're like, "Okay, they thank you." Made movie. This movie eighty four minutes long, and it would have been just take that scene of the fucking eating out. Sorry, I, I just to go back to my previous thought. Um, I'm looking at the Brian Froud stuff, and it it's very iconic. I remember this more than the Dark Crystal. I remember this style of art. And it looks like he did a concept art for next week's movie Labyrinth. So yes, be able to did. talk about him some more. Yeah, I might uh, see if I can snag a copy of the book if it's not like two hundred dollars or whatever, and I'll, sh- I'll show it on the camera. I'll be like, <laughs> I have a I have a Final Fantasy uh, um, uh, omnibus that I have. That's like three books, covers all the games up to like Final Fantasy ten. Mm-hmm. um and it's fun to just leaf through you know it's fun to look at the work of of uh yashitaka amano i think his name is i know the last name is amano um i have a leonardo da vinci book sweet yeah yoshitaka amano um, it's not a contest kaylin <laughs> <laughs> i have a leonardo da vinci book okay well we all have i just books. wanted to play too <laughs> that's it hey, it's similar um Yoshitaka Amano does all of the Final <laughs> Fantasy artwork in a very similar way to Brian Froud doing a very specific type of oh, artwork as well. Oh, is Final Fantasy on PS5? There's multiple, yeah, you have access to multiple Final Fantasy games. So I'll, Maybe I might play it for the first time. I'll Can sure we both play, play it? There's, n- I mean, we'll talk Other about it. the MMOs, that. there's not really any. Uh, yeah, this, it doesn't, they're, they're very, very much single player Japan, Japanese RPGs. Um, but I'll sure be through the games if you want to try them out. I'll tell you which one to play first. Uh, probably Should I do t- the first one first. Pro- no, Final Fantasy one will bore you to no end, and that's what about the one with the big sword on the cover? There's a that one maybe should be where you go first because that's they made a full on remake of that. Uh, that it has the best graphics on the console, arguably. Anyway, welcome back to the Final Fantasy corner. <laughs> Somehow we got back in this corner again. Um, (laughs) Let's let's close this let's close this chapter of Hey, did you see this one? What do you say? Did you guys think that uh, the never ending story sounds like the story just before Final Fantasy? Final Fantasy comes after the never ending story. What are you, some kind of goddamn genius? (laughs) That's the best thing I've ever heard. Do you think that's where Lamb Chops Play Along got their idea for the theme song? Yes, I do. This has been another episode of Hey, did you see this? No, one? that's not when you say that yet. I know, but it is because I gotta say that, and then I say for Kalen and Jason, you and Steve says for Jason and Kalen, and then you say for Jason and Steve, and then we say, Hey, did you see this one? And then I just did all the work for us. Thanks. For Jason and Kalen, I am Steven. <laughs> for Steven and for Kalen, I'm Jason. I am going now uh, for Jason and Steven. I'm myself. Oh, so close. Almost nailed the intro, almost nailed the outro. And I have to ask you, as always, hey, did you see this one? Hey, did you see this one? Mm, hey, did you see this one? <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, Hey, thanks for watching. Bye.